It's been six long years since we've had a new installment in Microsoft's Gran Turismo Challenger franchise, Forza Motorsport. Today, we take a look at our early review copy to see just what's up. In time between Motorsport 7 and 8, we've seen a generation jump from Xbox One to Series X and S, not to mention the massive leaps made on the PC. Gamers expect a heck of a lot more out of their racing games now than in 2017, so the question naturally becomes, has Forza Motorsport been able to keep up with the times, and is it a worthy competitor to its Sony rival? Let's jump in and find out. <laughs> Fortunately for us, going straight in is exactly what Motorsport does, starting us in a Maple Valley session in the upcoming Maple Valley is the perfect track to put the new Corvette E race through its paces. It's not a race. You won't be alone out there, so keep an eye out for traffic. Unfortunately for me, the game didn't detect my heathen PlayStation 5 gamepad before doing this, so I was left unceremoniously coasting off the track. Watching my car ominously steer itself made me realize I'd need to jump into the menu and disable a metric ton of assists. Now with my trusty, ancient Xbox 360 controller on deck, we take to Maple Valley in force. This session serves as a quasi-tech demo, being the visual equivalent of the developer shouting at you, look at all the pretties. And for sure, Maple Valley looks hugely improved from the recent Forza Horizon. You're seeing the PC version at maximum settings on an RTX 4090 with full ray tracing. The graphics of motorsport could be called bipolar. In some scenes, it looks like the most astonishing racing game I've ever seen, darn near photorealistic, while in others, the texture materials and lighting look so flat that you wouldn't be chastised for thinking they belonged in last gen. What motorsport seems to do is rely on ray tracing to give an astonishing lighting and reflection presentation in key areas, while the lack of attention to basic textures and materials becomes apparent as soon as the lighting conditions become flatter. There seem to still be some visual bugs, such as assorted LOD and texture pop-in issues, while I noticed the DLSS didn't really improve my frames whatsoever compared to running the game natively. Back to our introductory experience, we're soon asked to select from a collection of three cars to take us through the introductory Builder's Cup, the sensible, sporty front-wheel drive hatch, the even more sensible four-wheel drive sedan, or... America! Proceeding with the obvious choice, I came to realize some things very quickly. One, max difficulty in this game is actually really difficult. And two, when the cars snap on you, they can be quite difficult to recover. After struggling for a bit, I remembered that I'm a sweaty sim racer, so I traded this in for this. Or well, my gear is linked below. After some adjustment, the wheel netted the time I needed to safeguard my ego, though it revealed a ton of things about handling and motorsports physics engine that would frankly take way too long to explain in this review. So instead, I'm going to release a focused wheel and physics review from the sim racer perspective shortly after this. Make sure you subscribe not to miss it. In short, if you're intending to chill on the couch and play motorsport with your controller, you're not missing out on anything. In fact, the game feels exceptionally good on the gamepad. Actually, it could very well be the best handling gamepad racer I've ever played. And if you're wondering whether they really intended motorsport to be played in chase cam with a gamepad, just look at these proximity arrows. I mean, look at them. Why are they brown? Is it because I'm supposed to shit myself and somebody gets close? Most useless indicators ever. Which leads us neatly into the AI. The AI make Destruction Derby seem like lawn bowls. You think you've seen degenerate T1 pile-ups at Monza before? Just wait until you play motorsport. The cars in the midfield almost seem programmed to fly off the track at T1, often taking you squarely with them. If they're not flying off the track, they're sideswiping you as you attempt to overtake and then gluing their car to yours as a defensive measure. Weird flex, but okay. You'll notice my car is damaged in almost all of this footage, and that's because it's almost impossible to get through the race unscathed in this game. The AI's racecraft is set squarely on teenage arcade edgelord mode. And this is a crying shame, because once they space out a bit, they're actually really good. Unlike Gran Turismo, where the AI function is glorified moving obstacles for you to overcome, the motorsport AI can actually drive, especially at level 6 and beyond. So, you can legitimately find your difficulty sweet spot so you won't just be winning every race absentmindedly. 
This ties into a very interesting mechanic motorsport has. See, instead of qualifying for position before every race, you instead choose where you want to start on the grid. Weird flex again, I know, but hear me out. The idea is to lean into risk-reward. The further back you start, the bigger the bonus you get for getting on the podium. I applaud the developers for trying to take this game away from being another one of those blitz your way to first and take the entire competition as a sweepstakes affairs, which frankly are just boring as hell. Another thing they've tried to innovate on is what they call their CarPG mechanic. Ha! Get it? It's like role-playing, but with cars! Anyway, the idea is that you don't just level yourself, but you also level each car. The higher the car level, the more parts you're unlocked to install, and the more car points you get to install them. Money only works to buy cars, not parts. You can remove and swap parts around at will to create the best bill for a given car point limit level. The cool thing here is that it invests you more into each vehicle so that they feel more precious. The not so cool thing is that it makes you more hesitant to experiment with new cars, since they all start at level 1, and you have to run them up all over again just to get access to basic basic tuning options like sway bars, aero and suspension. To that end, Forza Motorsport has some decent options. You have all the usuals in here that bring the customizability on par with titles such as Gran Turismo. You can delve in and get your race engineering degree, though it's nowhere near as intimidating as something like Assetto Corsa Competizione. The game launches with a massive list of over 500 cars, all lovingly modelled and available for your perusal in the showroom. You can open doors, sit inside, inspect engine bays, trunks, and generally just enjoy everything on offer. The list ranges from old Le Mans races to classic Formula One cars, JDM Weebury, race cars, prototypes, and an assortment of modern machines. This, however, also forms the tragedy of Forza Motorsport. See, the main career mode is the Builders' Cup. And as the name would suggest, it's all about milking the car PG mechanic of grabbing an unassuming stock car, then slowly turning it into a track weapon. As such, race cars are woefully overlooked, especially in the early portions of the game. So if you're coming into this wanting to modify the car of your dreams, you're in luck. But if you want to do a multi-class race at Le Mans with prototypes, GTEs and GT3, then the career mode is sadly unaccommodating. Therein lies my main criticism of Forza Motorsport single player. It feels very grindy early on, like you're constantly being given busy work just to keep you in the retail cars for as long as possible. Each time you start in a new car or class, the grind begins yet again. You can't simply take currency you earned in other events and use them to unlock parts on the new car. You have to begin the process of leveling it all over again. I would like to have seen more of the tracks highlighted early on. Even several hours in, I've not been asked to take a single lap around some of my favourite racetracks. Virginia International, Road America and Mid-Ohio, not to mention the legendary Le Mans. Motorsport has a decent track list, with its usual slew of fictional tracks padding out the collection of licensed ones. By modern standards, people would say it's a bit slim, but with any luck, Turn 10 will pad it out with updates. And because you know where you are, no. No Nordschleife. At least not yet. They've said it's coming in early 2024. As a lifelong sound engineer, I'd be remiss if I didn't at least add a footnote about sounds. That footnote is... Meh. After you've played the Dirt Rally series, it's very difficult to adjust the anemic, sterile, yet somehow still overprocessed sounds that motorsport presents. The sounds range from bland, uninspiring, over-reverbed engines to a ridiculously out-of-place cliché impact sound that makes you feel like you're watching a low-budget Hollywood B-movie car chase. Playing Motorsport feels like what I imagine Project Cars 3 would have been if it were actually designed correctly. Motorsport is clearly a game focused toward enthusiastic casuals looking to indulge their love of motorsport from the comfort of their couch. Given how it presents on the wheel, I would say it's less hardcore and even more accessible than the venerable Gran Turismo. I would just like to have seen a career progression that's less linear and grindy, but rather just focused on enjoying and building out the driving experience itself, which is really satisfying on the gamepad. I also hope that over time, Turn 10 work on the AI and wheel physics in order to cultivate the sort of enthusiast community that will actually give the game multiplayer longevity. I'll be doing the Sim Racer perspective review followed by my top tips for getting through the career mode shortly after this video, so make sure to join us to get notified. But what do you think? Is it looking like motorsport will live up to your expectations? Let me know, and I'll see you soon. 
Oh, and if you just can't get enough of my soothing dulcet tones, come check out my new gaming channel here, where we've been crushing it lately featuring Remnant 2, Armored Core 6, Witchfire, and soon Cyberpunk and Lords of the Fallen. Do it. Do it now.